close your eyes and notice where you're feeling the breath. When the breath comes in, watch the breath come in. When it goes out, watch the breath go out. Try to breathe in a way that feels comfortable, feels refreshing to the body, soothing to the mind. We meditate to put the mind in a position where it can watch itself clearly, right here in the present moment, because this is where it shapes its experience. So you want to shape it well. You don't want greed, aversion, and delusion to come in and take over. So you have to be vigilant. You have to be watchful. But to stay watchful a long period of time requires that you feel at ease here, too. So remind yourself the breath is your home. This is where you come back to all the time. When you're in the present moment, the sense of the breath coming in, going out, you know you've got a body because you can breathe. If you couldn't breathe, you wouldn't know you had a body. So settle the mind down in the present moment, because when you're here, you can look at yourself carefully. You can not only look at the present, but you can look back at the past. You can look ahead to the future. Learn lessons from the past and then apply them to your plans for the future. We have lessons in living with ourselves, lessons with living with one another, so we have to learn. The Buddha points out four good lessons that you probably have noticed in the past, but he, it, it's useful that he points these things out because sometimes it's so easy to forget. If you want to live together well with other people, either in a family or a group, it's important to have four qualities. The first one is generosity, that you give of your time, you give of your energy. You're not always thinking about what you can get out of things, get out of the group, get out of the relationship. You're also thinking about what you can put into it. This is an opportunity to be generous. This means not only giving material things, but giving your time, giving your forgiveness, giving your knowledge, giving fairness. It takes energy to do these things, which is one of the reasons why it's good to have meditation as a good background. But without these things, you begin to wonder why there would be a relationship to begin with. It's all about giving. It's all about sharing. That's the first principle. The second principle is speak kind words. Now, this doesn't mean that you go around just saying empty platitudes all the time. It means that you go out of your way to be kind and respectful to the other person as you speak to them. Especially when you have something critical to say. You want to say it in a way that shows that you still respect the person. It means finding the right time, the right place, where there are not a lot of other people around when you have time to talk about things. Now, even though the words are critical, the, the other person senses that you have respect, and it's the respect that keeps the relationship going. They've done videos of couples discussing minor irritants, and then they slow them down so they can see the micro-expressions, and they found that they can actually predict whether a couple is going to stay together long or not by the micro-expressions that flit across their faces. Things that are there in broad daylight, but we often miss. And the micro-expression that kills the relationship more than anything else is contempt, looking down at the other person. So make sure that never comes out in your words or your expressions, that even when you're critical, it's with kindness. The third principle is genuine help. When you're going to help somebody, it's not for show or to make points. It's because you see that person really needs this help and would really benefit from it, and you're in a position to give it. So the other person really feels that you have his or her best interest at heart. Then finally, the fourth principle is consistency, which means two things. On the one hand, the goodness in the relationship you start out with, you try to be consistent uh, with that goodness over the long haul. And secondly, it means that the way you behave and speak to the person to his or her face is the same way you behave behind his or her back. The word comes back that behind his back you said this nice thing, or behind her back you said this nice thing. That keeps the relationship going. So make sure that any relationship you're dealing with that you want to have last has these four qualities. Generosity, kind words, genuine help, and consistency. This is what makes the relationship last, because it makes it a good relationship to have, one that both sides feel they benefit from.